Hello, my friends, and welcome back. Thank you very much for being with me again today. As expected, uh, people don't like to be heard. Therefore, they will start uh, making their voices uh, heard and they will organize and uh, start demonstrating. This is the normal course of uh, people. And then uh, there are other steps that uh, could happen if things get, um, you know, uh, out of control, which I think they are under control, but uh, they create a society out of control. So I posted a video a minute ago on, I made a video on um, the Czech, Re Czech Republic. In Czech Republic, about 70,000 Czech citizens protesting in a capital, pr Prague, against the sanctions, energy prices, inflation, and they want the coalition government, which is a, a stupidity, to get up out and don't listen to the guys over there um, on the, you know, who uh, are handling their issues and uh, the guys who handle their governments. So uh, I'm going to talk about this article that has to do with Poland and the same thing happens over there. And maybe not the riots uh, that are here, but it's protests. And it's very strange that you have in this country's protests, peaceful protests, and here in the United States you have uh, riots uh, slash protests. But I'm not going to go into that right now, but probably you and I know why probably we have this kind of uh, situations, uh, I guess, um, because it's our strength here. All right, so this article comes from uh, MoneyWise, MoneyWise, uh, Yahoo. And I'm quoting, this is beyond imagination. Poland homeowners are lining up for days, sleeping in their cars to buy fuel and coal stocks are still wild hot due to the demand. So they try to buy uh, fuel and coal stocks are still white hot due to demand. All right. So they, uh, they have problems with um, everyday life something that they thought about 30 years ago that they uh, escaped <laughs> yeah it's still summer in Poland but winter is coming according to Reuters outside the Libelski Vegel Bogdanka coal mine people are lining up to their cars and trucks to stock up on coal why because 3.8 million households in, in the country are relying on it for heating in the winter. This is beyond imagination, I'm quoting. People are sleeping in their cars, a 57-year-old man named Arthur tells Reuters he remembers communist times, like I do, and he doesn't like it a bit. He's ready, he participated, he knows what to do, but he doesn't like it. And I'm quoting, I remember the communist times. There you go, I didn't read this article. I remember I remember the communist times, but it didn't cross my mind that we could return to something even worse. Well, when I was over there and they were telling me, guys, those guys over there lie more than the communists lie. I'm saying, nah, yeah, oh yeah, all right. You just, because you are working where you work, you tell me that. And I came here and <laughs> surprise, surprise. All right. so. Um, after Russia, Russia's invasion of Ukraine, Poland and the European Union placed an embargo on, on the import of coal from Russia. So that means pow, pow, shot themselves. Although Poland uh, produces coal, the country largely leans on imported coal for much of its household heating. Lukas Horbachs, head of the Polish Coal Merchant Chamber of Commerce, Commerce tells Reuters that the embargo, and I'm quoting, turned the market upside down. And you didn't know that six months ago when you were, yeah, the Ruskies, yes, get the Ruskies. And now you're crying and all of you are going to cry over there. As I said, as I said, from the beginning, from the beginning, as much, I'm quoting, as much as 60% of those that use coal for heating may be affected by energy poverty, poverty. Despite climate, clim climate activity, activist continues effort to replace coal in power generation the black sedimentary rock is still in demand 
of course it is you can't just uh, you know you know that that expression you can't build the palace out of the pile of shit the same here you think you're gonna have the wind and the sun replacing all that all that energy they need or we need yeah but there's not gonna be all it's gonna be some so we're gonna have less less energy we will be able to have less less things we're gonna have times when we can turn on the lights and times when we can turn off the heat and times when we can drive the cars because everything is gonna be limited that's what the communists did i don't want to live like that i want to live in abundance and when that ends it ends oh don't think of uh, uh, future generations like what do you mean am i together with them or something what do you mean i'm thinking of my children but i'm trying to get their uh, their lives as beautiful as possible i don't want them to live in uh, in poverty because i'm waiting for the fifth or tenth generation to live still in poverty i think this is just a perpetuation of we live in poverty for those guys to live in comfort i think that's what it is and they ask us to live in poverty generations for for the future generations but they don't live in poverty and uh, you know in scarcity no we they ask us to live in scarcity do you think that with all these uh global warming and all that blah 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 here do you think that uh, they ask us they're gonna tell us that hey you're gonna have the same standards of living as now no but they don't tell you that because they don't want to scare you remember my little slope theory they start slowly, literally, they, oh, it's danger, we are in danger, it's blah, blah, blah. And they don't tell you at the end, you're going to have a worse life and you're going to have this and that because it's, they say, oh, we're going to replace it, all of it, we're going to get, how are you going to have an abundance of energy with sun and wind? I mean, this is so, so physically, if you study physics and not only that, impossible, that makes me laugh and I can say that but i don't know if this guy's gonna let me go through with this but it's just uh you know please and then regarding the communist times we we who lived through those communist times and we have scarcity unlike the western countries good for them we know how it is we know we lived and we adapted so i'm very well adapted but i don't like it it's like you know you used to be a uh i don't know a, i don't want to say call it an athlete but let's say you used to fight and you trained you know you had periods of you know rotation and peaks and fought and so on and after you did all that then you had a pause where you didn't train as much because you can't keep a, a, an athlete at the highest uh, levels all the time because your body's going to collapse you give him you have a, a peak you keep him over there when the competitions are and then it drops and then again it's not like you're going to stop stop and eat like a pig but you know so the same is like someone with Miami, hey, you gotta start competing again. I know how it is. I know how how hard it is to train for that. Uh, it's hard, you know, to get back into that shape. But you you, you did it before, so you you kind of like ready. But imagine a person who never did it. Okay, well we're gonna train a little bit. I mean, we watch some TV. I know these guys how they work and so on. It's not about. It's not that. It's you know. But I'm already ready. But I don't like it. I don't want to do it. And these guys remember that. This guy, 57, he remembers. He was, he was what, 20? About 20, 18? He has a vivid image of how it was. And remember, Poland was not at the level of Romania when they uh, kicked the communist star up. It was not. Romania was much more uh, poorer. Uh, I, w I visited Poland as a communist country and I know exactly how it, it was. For me, it was like paradise. Coming from Romania, from the same Eastern Bloc, the communist countries, Poland was great great and romania was well you couldn't have bread you have a uh, rationed bread you couldn't buy meat you couldn't see meat oranges i see one orange sometime or two oranges sometimes for christmas that was when i ate oranges i loved oranges they were not on the market you couldn't find them the same bananas the same maybe you see one banana or two bananas as, uh, you know uh, expect when you go to the bathroom but anyway except when you go to the bathroom but it's, it's just you couldn't see it you don't see bananas no bananas Imagine, you see, maybe apples and this. So we know exactly what scarcity is with uh, heating, with energy when it's turned off by the government whenever they want. You don't have hot water, you don't have electricity. That's how it was for me. So when I went to Poland, I saw over there lights outside in the streets being on in the evening and night. I was like, oh my God. In Romania, they were over there, but not on. Why? Because they didn't have bulbs. And it was, oh, we have to conserve energy. So I know how it is. This guy doesn't want to go back when he was the, the 
to buy gas for the car, there were lines. You were sleeping in the cars, like this guy said, sleeping in the cars, and you switch with the other parent. The parents were sp switching, so they advanced a little bit, adv advanced a little bit, and it would take maybe a week to get the pump and buy four liters. You, that was the cap for you know four liters as a, as a gallon, and then it was for about a week or so or a month, depending on where you lived in the, in the country. Uh, okay, thank you very much. I don't want to go over there. I want to have a nice life, good life. I will work for it, as Montana. I work for it. I, uh, yeah, I work for it, and that's why I came to this country. One of the reasons. If I work, I want to get money. Why should I be staying in Romania? Be over there, uh, a teacher or something, right? And uh, get two hundred dollars a month. Why don't come here and get, I don't know, 60,000 uh, a year? Why not? Uh, you know, and this was the economic factor, among other social factors that were involved in, uh, in uh, my desire to come over here. And the culture factor, that was a big thing with those. Anyway, so yeah, this guy doesn't want to go back to those times. He's perfectly able to survive and his communism was much, much beautiful than my communism. So I... And regarding the uh, renewable energy, good luck with that. I was like, good luck with that. Unless we don't have a, such a big population that we have right now, oh my, seven billion uh, people on this planet, almost, or we're there, I don't know, something like that. Seven billion, then we have all the cars, all the energy that we consume and so on. Do you think we can do it with wind and uh, uh, sun? What are you talking about? I mean, unless we go and revive, boo, 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 What's his name? Tesla. Nikola Tesla. If we get him up, then we say, okay, what was your plan? We're tapping into the energy, the uh, energy, and we can do everything. And then what's his name? Uh, was Ro uh, not Rothschild. <laughs> uh, Rockefeller, I think he said, yeah, yeah, but uh, how do we get the money from all this? And Tesla said, well, no, this is going to be free for everybody. <laughs> I'm not going to fund you. Beat it. You remember that? Just read Tesla, Nikola T T Tesla, and see what he did. He wanted to tap the energies from the, which we tried from a long time, you know, from uh, uh, thunders having a flash, uh, I can't remember right now, the, from lightning, and not only from lightning, he said that there's another energy somewhere that we can tap it and suck it, and he had a method of changing that, store it, and transmit it to the whole population through the air, not through the wires and all that, that we can just have towers that we can... He had a great, 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 great idea, but he needed money. He started that project, and then when this guy said, okay, but who's, how, how are we going to tap the money? How we get the money? He said, no, no, this is going to be free. Everybody can have access. Pfft, I'm not in it. Bye-bye. He left. The bankers left him. No profit? No, uh, no thank you. That's why sometimes it makes you uh, wonder about uh, uh, cancer and cavities and all that. <laughs> yeah, you want to solve that? Like uh, Tesla wanted to solve the energy issue? Good luck. And who's going to get the money if you solve it? Because if you solve it, someone <laughs> that's it. Uh, some, a lot of people will uh, lose their lives and have to start uh, working in a different field. So yeah, Poland, good luck. Now you got to go and start uh, talking to your government in a democratic way and change your ways. Thank you very much for being with me again today. Stay strong, stay smart, look for the truth and be just.